just enough dishes for you and maybe a couple guests. Do not overdo it when it comes to dishes. I know it's easy to think that like, all right, well, I have my first place. Everyone's gonna come visit me. My mom, my cousins, my friend, my best friend, maybe their friends. It might happen once, but no one really visits people like that, especially when you have your first apartment, you're constantly working. I know when I had my first place, I was doing YouTube and also working crazy, crazy hours at my main job. So I was barely at my apartment. A lot of people used to ask me, why am I paying rent if I'm not there? Um, because I was always working. So keep that in mind that you do not need to spend a ton of money on dishes. Also, all the dishes that I had were from the dollar store or from the, um, the, we had like this bin at work where it was like a free bin. I grabbed all of my forks and spoons from the free bin. You can also look at your local thrift stores, a lot cheaper than going to Walmart and Target where you're forced to buy a set of plates. Usually it comes with like eight plates and nine cups. You do not need that, okay? When you are one person starting out, you do not need that many dishes. Trust me, you'll thank me later. One shower curtain, believe it or not, all you need is one shower curtain. I have had the same shower curtain forever. All you have to do is just throw it in the wash once a month, hang it up to dry in your bathroom, and that's it. You do not need a plastic liner. You do not need a decorative shower curtain. It's a bunch of BS. Don't believe what other people tell you. Do not go by what they tell you when it comes to like decorating or furnishing your place. Most people just want to furnish it the way that they would have wanted to furnish it with their first apartment. So keep in mind that whatever you spend your money on right now, you're gonna look back 10 years from now and be like, damn, I wish I would have never spent all that money redoing my first apartment for no reason. I know a lot of people have some negative comments when it comes to reusable shower curtains. I've seen a lot of people say that they get a lot of molds, blah, blah, blah. I've never ever had that problem with my reusable shower curtain. As long as the shower curtain is water resistant, then you are golden and you are gonna save a ton of money because you won't have to replace those plastic liners. And also water doesn't leak out. I've never had a problem with wet floors and I have been using reusable shower curtains since 2017 never had an issue. Saves you a ton of money. Who doesn't want to save money? Only purchase a twin bed or a queen bed. When I had my first apartment, buying this bed was the one thing that I shouldn't have bought. One, it was too big for one person. I grew up, by the way, on a twin size bed until I was about 26 and a half years old. Twin size bed fit me perfectly fine but people kept putting it in my head that I need a queen bed or a king size bed. Don't ever do a king size bed. They're expensive with everything. The mattress is expensive. Bigger is not always better. And when you get the mattress cover, the sheets, the blankets, the pillowcases, just because it's king size, now you're gonna pay double the price than you would have paid with a queen, a full, or a twin. Depending if you're in a relationship or not, then get a queen or a full. But if you're just by yourself, either get a couch that has a pullout bed. My mom slept on a pullout bed for years and she said it saves so much space. She still lives in a studio apartment till this day and she misses her pullout bed because she swears that her regular bed is just taking up unnecessary space. So that's something I wish I would have done is to just get a couch that had a bed where you can pull it out every night. Again, saves you space, saves you money. You don't have to buy a bed frame. You don't have to buy a headboard. Everything's built into the couch. But if you don't want that whole setup with the pullout bed and the couch, either opt out for a twin bed, full bed, or queen. Do not go any bigger than a queen because you are going to be paying buku money with a king size. Any main things that you're gonna need for a king size bed, you're gonna pay king size money. A decent vacuum. This is something that I will never ever regret because I'm still using it till this day. I purchased my Dyson back in, I think the end of like 2018. I waited until it went on sale. I got a really, really good deal. I am very patient. I'm probably the most patient person out of 
every family member that I know. And I wanted a Dyson for a year as I seen my sisters drop $400, $500 on a Dyson. And I'm like, mm, no, I'm not spending that kind of money. I'll wait. So I was using my broom and a tiny little vacuum, a handheld vacuum for the longest time. And that was my little car vacuum that I would use. So I just used it for my apartment. And then finally, I think it was like, um, a week after Black Friday, the Dyson V8 went on sale for $128. I left work early to go pick it up. I bought the last one that was in my Best Buy and I still have it till this day. I maintain it by cleaning it. Um, I charge it once when it's done charging, I unplug it right away. If you keep your Dysons plugged in, I heard a rumor that they don't last long. You don't have to get a Dyson. This is not sponsored, I wish, but there's so many decent vacuums out there now and having a decent vacuum is going to save you money and it's going to save you time because time is money at the end of the day. So don't try to cheap out when it comes to a vacuum. This is something you want to spend good money on because this is going to last you for years and years. Like I said, I still have my Dyson till this day. I bought it when I was 28 and I'm going to be 32 this year and it's still going strong. It works amazing as long as you keep up with it, you know, clean it, maintain it. If you maintain the things that you have right now, they will repay you in the future, like they'll last longer. That way that you don't have to replace them all the time. So I think spending good money on a decent vacuum is 100% worth it. And the last thing that you really need for your apartment is no more than five household cleaners. I see a lot of cleaning videos online where they are using far too many cleaners for their house. There's no need to have a tile cleaner, a grout cleaner, kitchen sink cleaner, a bathroom sink cleaner. There's no need. And companies do such an amazing job with advertising for every little thing in the house. But best believe you can work with five cleaners or less. First cleaner that you will need, and this is only if you have real wood in your apartment, like real wood table or real wood, um, like hardwood floors. For my first apartment, I had hardwood floors, so I would purchase Murphy oil and dilute it with some water and that's how I would clean my floors. That Murphy oil bottle lasted me like two years because you're diluting it. So you're making it last a lot longer, like you're stretching the product. And that's really all you need when it comes to wood. Um, for hardwood floors, you don't need anything else. Real hardwood floors, I should say. And when it comes to a hardwood table, which that's what we have now, I use the Method Hardwood Cleaner. That bottle's probably gonna last us years and years because that's the only real wood item or furniture that we have in the house. So if you do have real wood, whether it's floors or a table or chairs, do look into getting a hardwood cleaner because a lot of other cleaners out there are going to be a little too harsh to clean or maintain those wood items. Wood is tricky. You don't wanna add too much water to wood. You don't wanna add any like antibacterial stuff on wood because they get stained very fast and they get streaks and wood is tricky, but wood is also kind of worth it because it lasts you a long, long time. I would say like real hardwood stuff. If you don't have real wood in your apartment, whether you don't have real wood floors, you don't have tables, then do not get a wood cleaner. You don't need it. You can cross that off your list. Now, as for a glass cleaner, such as your windows, glass table, a mirror, same thing goes for like shower, like the shower on walls. If you have the glass shower walls, you can use the same method and you can also use it on your floors, like tiles. And that is the water and vinegar mix. You just get a gallon of vinegar. It will last you more than an entire year because you're also gonna dilute that. Half water, a couple tablespoons of vinegar, and that's it. Do you have a streak-free window cleaner, mirror cleaner, floor cleaner? It works wonders. You don't have to spend a dime on Windex, which I haven't purchased Windex probably since I was like 23 years old. Harsh glass cleaner from like Walmart or Target made me feel so nauseous. And that's when I looked into doing DIY cleaners. It works phenomenal. It also works great on your car windows. So as a bonus. Another cleaner that is good to have, I personally don't have this one because my water and vinegar mix works pretty well, but I will say if you do a lot of cooking with meat and things like that, then get a multi-surface cleaner because that way you can clean your kitchen with it, so, you know, your countertops, maybe your stove, things like that. Multi-surface cleaners are great because you can use it on numerous things in the house. It's gonna save you space, it's gonna save you money, 
And yeah, there's so many different kind out there if you wanna go more towards the natural route. I think Target has a couple brands where it's like, um, like tablets you can add into the water and they dissolve. There's so many different multi-surface cleaners. I don't know a lot of them because I just use the water and vinegar method, but to each his own. And the last cleaner that I can recommend, and this is something that I started buying after the whole COVID thing, and that is an antibacterial spray or antibacterial wipes. I have both because we do have family members that come over quite often and I like to make sure that everything's sanitized, especially the bathroom. That is like the one area where I deep clean constantly because germs hoard a lot, or I say more in the bathroom than anywhere else in the house. So when you live alone, make sure to have some kind of antibacterial spray, whether you're spraying your doorknobs, just sanitize the place as much as you can, especially if you work in a hospital or a nursing home where you're mostly prone to getting sick more often than the regular person, then you definitely wanna keep some antibacterial spray or wipes, whatever one you prefer, on deck. I never used to do this when I lived alone because I lived alone when there wasn't no COVID. And I don't know, I feel like back then we weren't as cautious when it came to germs. And it wasn't even that long ago. But now, like with what happened in 2020, so I'm a lot more cautious when it comes to people coming over and then constantly sanitizing. So I do wanna say that DIY cleaners could only go so far. So that's why I also purchased antibacterial spray and the wipes because it is crucial nowadays. You wanna make sure that your house is sanitized. Whether you live alone or not, make sure your house is somewhat germ free. Anyways, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down below if you would like a part three of what you really need for your first apartment.